Choline is one of those nutrients most people don't even think about, but it plays a huge role in how our body and brain function. If you ever had trouble focusing or struggled with liver health, chances are choline was part of the story. In this video, we'll go over what choline actually is, the different forms that you can take as supplements, how much you might need, and some of the possible side effects. I will also explain the whole T-Mau connection, since that comes up a lot when people talk about choline and heart health. First off, choline is an essential nutrient. Your body can make a little on its own, but that's not nearly enough to cover your daily needs. So you have to get it from food or supplements. Choline is found mostly in animal foods, with the richest sources being egg yolks, liver, beef, chicken, fish, and dairy. Plant foods like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and peanuts do contain some, but in much smaller amounts. That's why vegans and even strict vegetarians are often at a higher risk of deficiency, just because they cut out the most concentrated sources of choline, so it's much harder for them to hit their daily requirements. This is also a reason why supplementation can make a big difference for them. Keep in mind that even though choline isn't technically a vitamin, it behaves like one in many ways, and it also used to be classified as one. Its most important roles are building cell membranes, so every cell in your body has a membrane that is made of phospholipids. Choline is used to create those phospholipids, which means without enough of it, your cells can use their structure or communicate properly. It's also important for making acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter, so basically a chemical messenger in the brain that works together with the nervous system. It's crucial for memory, learning, and muscle contraction. If you're low in choline, you might have trouble with focus and memory, and even experience muscle weakness during workouts. Also, it's important for liver health and fat metabolism. That's because choline is needed to transport fats out of the liver. Without enough of it, fats can build up, which in many times contributes to fatty liver disease. And lastly, we have methylation. Choline acts as a methyl donor, so it provides methyl groups that help control DNA, detoxification, and even mood regulation. If you've heard about methylation in the context of vitamin B9, so folate, or maybe B12, then choline plays a similar supportive role. When it comes to supplements, there are several different types, and not all of them are created equal. So let's go through the main ones. First would be choline bitartate. This is the cheapest and most common form. It's just basic choline bound to tartaric acid. It does raise blood choline levels, but only a small fraction of it makes it into your brain. That means it's better for liver and general body needs, but not great if your main goal is memory or focus. Next, we have choline citrate. This is very similar to choline bitartate, but it's bound to citric acid instead of tartaric acid. It's slightly more water soluble and may be absorbed a bit better. Some people also use it for muscle cramps because it has a mild effect on the nervous system. But like bitartate, it's not the most efficient way to boost brain acetylcholine. Then we have alpha GPC. So this is a more expensive form and it easily crosses the blood brain barrier, which means it can directly boost acetylcholine in the brain. Studies show that it can improve memory, focus and mental clarity and even support recovery in conditions like stroke or cognitive decline. Athletes sometimes also use it because it does seem to support power output and muscle contractions a bit. Citicoline, also known as CDP choline, is another very high quality form and it also crosses into the brain. It not only boosts acetylcholine, but also helps build up phosphatidylcholine in cell membranes. Some research suggests that it can help with attention, learning, and protecting the brain from age-related decline. So very similar to alpha-GPC. Now compared to it, CD choline might have a longer lasting effect on brain function, but both are pretty popular, especially in the biohacking circles. And then lastly, we have phosphatidylcholine, which usually comes from lesser than supplements. This is choline bound in a fat molecule, usually derived from soy or sunflower lecithin. It's great for liver health and repairing your cell membranes, but it's not as effective at raising brain acetylcholine. Still, it's a very good all-around option for general choline support, especially if you're worried about fatty liver. So with all these different choline forms, which one should you choose? Well, it depends. For brain and memory support, go with alpha GPC or CD choline. Both cross the blood-brain barrier, like I just said, and directly increase acetylcholine. Alpha GPC might be better for short-term brain power, like studying or athletic performance, while CD choline might be more useful for long-term brain health. 
For liver health, lecithin would be your best option. It helps move fat out of the liver and supports cell membrane repair. Lecithin also helps increase bile production, which is another plus. It's my favorite choline supplement since I'm really into liver function and detoxification. For general choline support and if you're on a tight budget, choline bitartate or choline citrate can help you meet your basic needs, especially if your diet is very low in choline-rich foods like eggs. But keep the T-MAO effect in mind that we will talk about in a second. And for athletic performance, alpha-GPC is the most researched option. Some studies show that it helps with power output, like I said before, and it can also help with reaction time and recovery. So you might want to try it even if you aren't interested in its brain-boosting effects. When it comes to the ideal dosage, your choline needs will vary a lot between people. The official adequate intake is around 425 milligrams per day for women and 550 milligrams per day for men. But that's just a general guideline and your needs could definitely be higher if you exercise a lot, are pregnant, or have genetic differences that affect your methylation. Typical supplement dosage look like this. So for choline bitartate or choline citrate, we have around 500 to 1000 milligrams per day. For alpha GPC, around 300 to 600 milligrams per day. For CD choline, around 250 up to 1000 or maybe even 2000 milligrams per day. And for lecithin supplements, they usually range from 1200 milligrams to 2400 milligrams per day, sometimes split into two doses with meals. This will give you around 250 to 500 milligrams of direct phosphatidylcholine. Some people even go over that dose, including me, but starting low is always a smart idea here. This applies to all supplements, by the way. When it comes to possible side effects, choline supplements are generally safe, but taking too much can cause some unpleasant effects. The most common ones that are reported include a fishy body odor. This happens because excess choline can be turned into TMA, which has a strong fishy smell. You also sometimes run into stomach upset, so some people get nausea, diarrhea, or bloating if they take too much at once. And then headaches or low blood pressure. This also usually only happens with high doses, especially alpha-GPC or CD-choline, because they can sometimes affect blood pressure in very sensitive people. For others, it causes overstimulation, because like I said before, choline boosts acetylcholine, so too much can make you feel restless or wired. So if you get anxiety, insomnia, or muscle twitching, you're definitely overdoing it and need to cut back on your dose. The tolerable upper intake level for choline is set at 3.5 grams per day, which is quite high. But most people feel side effects well before hitting that level, so always be careful here. Before I end this video, let me also talk about the choline TMAO connection. TMAO stands for trimethylamine and oxide. When you consume a lot of choline, certain gut bacteria first convert it into TMA, which is the stuff that creates the fishy body odor we just talked about, and then your liver turns that TMA into TMAO. High TMAO levels have been linked to a higher risk of heart disease in some studies. But here's the nuance. Not everyone produces the same amount of TMAO. It really depends on your gut microbiome. And fish actually contains TMAO directly, and people who eat a lot of fish usually have lower, not higher rates of heart disease. So it's still unclear whether TMAO itself is harmful or if it's more of a marker for an unhealthy gut. When it comes to supplements, choline bitartate and choline citrate are the most likely to increase TMAO because they release free choline that gut bacteria cannot convert. Alpha-GPC and CD-choline seem to be less affected because they're absorbed more efficiently before reaching the gut bacteria. Lecithin is probably also fairly low risk because the choline is bound in a food matrix that slows down absorption. So if you're worried about TMAO, definitely stick with alpha-GPC, CD-choline, or lecithin. Also make sure that you're supporting a healthy gut microbiome with plenty of fiber, which will then reduce TMA production in the first place. So to wrap up this video, choline is one of the most underrated nutrients out there. It keeps your brain sharp, your liver healthy, and your metabolism running smoothly. The best forms depend on your goals, alpha-GPC and CD-choline for brain power, phosphatidylcholine from lecithin for liver support, and bitartate and citrate if you want a cheap general coverage. It's a nutrient that especially vegans and vegetarians need to have on their radar, but even meat eaters benefit from it, and I've been taking it for years. 